here's what happens. Most of our aerial apparatus is a rear mount and we have Seagrave, Emergency One, American La France, we may have a Pierce, I'm not sure, we may not, and we also now have Crimson. Uh, ladder Three is the only tiller right now. Uh, ladder Six used to be a bucket truck. Uh, it is now a rear mount, exactly like this. Ladder Tower Four, it's not a tower ladder, Ladder Tower Four. The difference between a tower ladder, which is usually the one with the bucket, and it also has the ladder pipe, pre-piped water system that shoots water. That's a, uh, uh, a tower ladder. We have a ladder tower. Tower ladder four, which is a ladder tower, means that it's not only a tower, but it, you can also use the ladder to evacuate people. You can actually open up the bucket and use, and use it as an evacuation post that people can go through. The tower ladders weren't built that way. Even though they have a ladder attached to it, it's an escape ladder. It's for us in case we get in trouble. It could shift. It's not designed for an evacuation process. Tower Ladder 4 is. The purpose of the aerials, obviously, is to get us into places where there are heights. But the truck companies traditionally carry a lot of the forcible entry tools. There's an acronym that people use called Lovers U. Lovers U. That was ladders, overhaul, ventilation, uh, forcible entry, thank you, rescue, and salvage. And that's what the truck companies did. So the truck companies normally would park in front of the building, obviously, so that they could make the ladder uh, uh, available to get people in and out, but also to be in front of the building to bring all the truck work equipment there, the forcible entry tools, the jacks, the shop vacs, the squeegees, and all that stuff. With this rig, what we're going to talk about real quick is a quick setup. When you're in drive, we're going to say that we pulled up in front of the building. We're already parked. Just as uh, Captain Early and crew are down there with the engine, they're making their attack and supply operation. But we may or may not have to go to a defensive mode and use the tip of this aerial to elevate a stream to go to defensive mode and use master streams in a defensive mode. But right now, we just want to talk about the quick setup of the aerial. So what we want to do is make sure that we drove up, we parked it where we have access to all of our equipment, but also when we put these outriggers or jacks down that we don't catch a parked car or we take out the street that we can't move any other apparatus. One way to do it, the best way, is if you have a two-lane road, uh, make sure that you stay close. If it's a tight street, stay close to the yellow line. It's going to give you the room to put your jacks down. Only when you're not going to give up space. You don't want to give up space too far away from the building, you're defeating the purpose of your aerial because now you have, to, you have to go at a lower angle and you have to extend it further. The closer I am to the building, the more ladder I get. But if I'm too close, the ladder becomes useless. So we want to use the proper angle just as if you were climbing up the ladder. So 75 degrees is perfect. If you have to go further, you have to go further. You have to go lower, you have to go lower. All right, so we've pulled up. And we're in drive mode. So what we've done, and I'll, I'll tell you one of the easiest ways to start it, all of these trucks need power. Somewhere there's a switch that turns the batteries on and makes the power of the battery available to the truck. We used to call it a Boston switch because that was the company that made them before. They're all different kinds, but if you turn on that power, now nothing happens because now that power has to be directed. There is either going to be a master on switch or an ignition switch. It could be silver, it could be black. It doesn't matter. Something has to tell the truck that the batteries are available. When we hit that, you're going to hear a series of clicks. When those clicks stop, that means the computer is ready and or all the battery is available to the truck. But this is a diesel truck. So the start switch needs to be held or turned on or pushed so that the glow plug comes on first, it ignites with the fuel and it starts. So once I push that start switch, it may not start right away. Hold it. Hold it. The starter is going to go in, the glow plug is going to glow, and it's going to engage. On all of these trucks, we have a power tank. 
takeoff or PTO. What the power takeoff does is take the power of the engine and transmission and transfer it over to the hydraulic system that allows us to operate the jacks and the ladder. When you're running, you're going to have your emergency lights on, other equipment that's running. If the truck is going to be idle, you want to hit a high idle button. That raises the RPMs of the engine to make sure that the alternator is giving us maximum output so that we don't kill the batteries while we're here. switch, the most important for this ladder, is the power takeoff or PTO. Once we hit that, it transfers the power to the hydraulic system. The same thing happens with pumpers. The PTO gets engaged when you use the road to pump switch. The only difference with this truck is I don't have to engage the transmission for the work. All we have to do is throw the switch. has been transferred back to the hydraulic system, if you look at that panel there, you'll see a series of indicator lights, both electronic, and you'll see a mechanical indicator to tell us the safe operating ranges for this piece of apparatus. Now, currently the switch is set for jacks. It's always going to be at jacks when you're driving because that was the last thing you did. What we want to do is take the plates down and put them, we call them mud plates, but it's to give you a level and solid uh, uh, base so that it redistributes the weight of the jacks. There are a series of controls for each of the jacks, both front and rear. They're on each side of the truck. Why? Because we want the operator to be able to watch the jack go down. So the first thing that we're going to do is push front jack out. It goes out, pull the switch, it goes down. Just make contact at this point. Some of these trucks are not tricky, but it's a balancing act. The jacks have to be engaged evenly, otherwise you'll never be able to switch over to the ladder operation. The jacks have to be engaged first. So if we just make contact, we're doing fine. As we do that, sometimes the lights will indicate that the jack is in the proper manner. That's fine. That means I won't have to touch that jack. But again, if the jacks aren't, the lights aren't working, how would you know? We know because when we throw the switch and start to use the ladder, we won't be able to use the ladder. So we'll have to come back down. Well, what can we use if we don't have the lights? We can use that bubble gauge. We can actually use that and get within an operable range. So now we'll lower these as well. You're going to be at fires sometimes. Now we have three lights lit. People are going to be screaming. They can scream all they want. If this truck isn't in the proper position, it's useless to you. Let them scream. Make sure that if you have to do something like that, and did you hear the difference? That was the fourth jack being engaged, and now this green interlock light comes on to let us know the complete hydraulic system is engaged in the proper manner. Once that's set, we can throw this switch to ladders. The jacks are now engaged and locked. Now, this is perfect, we're on level ground. Sometimes you're not gonna be on level ground. And again, you'll have to go back to that jockeying motion. There are a lot of people that like to throw these things down very quickly. If you do this in the proper sequence, you're doing it as quickly as possible because you're gonna eliminate mistakes. Now, once we switch the ladders, cut that.